So good morning. Aloha kakahiaka. It's glad to be here. It's quite a, a special occasion for me to be able to uh, speak in front of you guys. Um, I'm at Lanakila Baptist Church, and a uh, church that we've been in love with and the school we've been in love with for, for many, many years. And uh, it, it try to be a blessing to them, and they're, they've definitely been a blessing to us. So um, a lot of sweet, sweet fellowship and people here. Uh, so Romans chapter 12 is where we're at. If you would open up to Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, God does not put out things that are just mysterious and out there. This, he's very practical. And this chapter is so practical as far as how we can step by step live a godly life, be a minister to our community. Wait, wait, I, I thought only preachers supposed to be that kind. No, sorry, my first language is pigeon. If you didn't know that, I'm fourth generation from Hawaii, so you got to just deal with it, okay? If I break into it, you got it, all right? So how you have a boy? Yeah. Uh, so practical advice for practical holiness. Why practical twice? Because God's practical, right? So our one true and living God gives us through his word step-by-step -step instructions for living a fruitful, peaceful, and productive life. And there you go. So for myself, uh, we got to go to, this is a huge Thanksgiving church in um, Wuhan, China. Uh, yep, 2015 was this one. We were there in 16. Um, and got to sing and pray and uh, uh the gentleman who's on the, let's see, how do you do that, right, is Phil. Uh, I don't know if you remember Pastor Curtis. Uh, okay, so Pastor Curtis and then Sam Curtis ran the uh, Christian bookstore in Mililani for many, many years. I went there and met Miss Kay Curtis uh, early. It was about 2000, yeah, it was 2001. And I uh, went in there just to try to get some literature and the Bibles and things because we were starting a mission plant. We actually moved here to uh, as missionaries. And um, when I went in there, there was this little bowl on the desk and, and on the counter. And she goes, uh, I said, what is this for? It's a little rice bowl. She says, oh, we send Bibles to China. Said, okay. She speaks like that. I said, would you like to go? I said, I, I'm just, I'm just fr fresh back in Hawaii. I, I, uh, I'd like to go, but that's not something, I mean, I've never thought of China. You know, don't you dig a hole there or something? And, and just, I was just messing with her, and, and she, she says, I will pray for you. Yes. Next night, Pastor Duza, would you like to go to China? Um, sure. A soldier at uh, Schofield, he cannot go because he is active duty. He would like to send you in his place. Will you go? Yeah, yes. I don't have a passport. I don't have any. Oh, my goodness. So all of a sudden, I have, I, I, as a high school student, I traveled abroad just a little bit because my dad worked for Pan Am. So I got free tickets, got to fly to Hamburg, then took a train to Stockholm. And, and that was just wonderful, you know, to travel as a high school thing, my brother and I, and then come back home. And that was it, we thought. Well, suddenly I find myself in China, the first of seven trips that have been in, got to lead not, up to 330 now people to the Lord and have seen the ministry grow and seen now from that, seeing others and thousands and, and being able to preach conservative, biblical, non, no nonsense teachings and, and the Communist Party would allow us the, to come in because we're not preaching over them. We're helping to support and keeping out the, the, the false ideologies and things that were coming in that were actually causing problems. And many have died and been killed because they brought in some woo -woo stuff that you can't find in the Bible, so they don't agree with it, and that's it. You, know, you don't do that. Anyway, moving on, uh, just some more... This gentleman was our translator, Pastor Larry Chalk, who has been right here where I'm standing a couple of times. And an amazing man of God 
who, like another amazing man of God, Pastor Schwab, both of their, his mind is gone. He's gone, gone senile. And so we've lost a Paul. You know, Paul was one who could speak many, 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 many languages and could just do a segue. I, I, probably the oddest time was when I would speak, he would speak, another translator speak, another translator speak, and this other translator would just keep going, and we'd all look at him and go, hey, you know. And, well, when you're out in these places, there's no, the dialects are just, you start getting, you know, anyway, song, song, dialect, anyway. So, I beseech you, therefore, let's get back on track. Nice rabbit trail, right? But you too can minister. That's my point. You too can do this. Watch, and I'll, and I'll bring it back around. So he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Step by step, first step. Present yourself to the Lord. You've got to be available. Okay? And doing this is not available. Okay? Guys? Young guys? Uh, it sucks your brain. It's like one of those uh, doppelganger mind suckers. And there's nothing left, you know? Uh, at the end of the day, oh, I'm so tired, man. What did you do? Yeah. Okay. Right. There's the answer. Um, so present your bodies to the Lord. Contrary to, politic, to this popular liberal propaganda, your body is not your own once you have humbled yourself before the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Once you've asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin, once you've asked the Lord to be the Lord over your life, these are the steps of salvation, by the way, how you come to know the Lord. He changes here. I... For many years, I didn't come to know the Lord. You know, say, oh, you're a pastor. I didn't come to know the Lord until I was 27. Okay, I lived a long and and disgusting life. Let's just put it that way. I uh, did things that, you know, I, I'm not proud of. But God has showed me a better way. God showed me forgiveness. He showed me a way out of, because He calls me out of the world to be set apart. Okay, to be holy. To be sanctified, which means to be used by God for God's purpose. Do I struggle as a human? Yes, I'm in flesh. Do I make mistakes? Yes. But you know what? I, like David, I just want to bow down and beg God to help me to be better than I am right now. And it's a consistent process. There's setbacks. There are mistakes. Man, I'm learning parenting over and over again. You got a house full of teenagers, you just bound for trouble. Okay? We got one out. She's 25. That's great. You know, she's on her own. But the other three, first one's married. I love that. Her husband can handle that. The other two, I love you. They're gonna watch this, so I'm in trouble. Anyway. But here, here it is. It says, be not conformed. What does the verse say here? Two, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may test, prove, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, figure out exactly what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Okay, so I say, well, what is the will of God for me? And a lot of people who first become Christians say, well, what's, what does God require? How, how can I please God? I, I want to be acceptable to him. I, I want to... Um, do the right things. I want to be someone that, 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 that I can look back and I, I don't hang my head, you know? I want to look back and say, I lived a life that was worth it to somebody. Because in the end, isn't that really what matters in this world? Not to God, but in this world among people is who remembers you? What did you do? What do they remember you for? Disney teaches a different lesson, which is that liberal theology again. Just follow your heart, whatever it makes you happy. You know, happy is like boom, 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 boom. You're never going to be satisfied. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. That is a rising, it's like the tide that stays up, okay? And no matter who or what tries to smash it, God is there lifting you up and keeping you so that I can be really, really devastated, okay? Some terrible stuff has happened to our family, and yet I can have joy in my heart. And people look at me and say, 
dude, you ought to be just, you know, wasted out, you know? I I said, I am my God. My Jesus is inside of me. He protects me. He guides me. He is my strength. Because the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Am I going backwards now? I don't know. Okay. So, again, you see the chrysalis is formed, you know, and then you see that you could become a butterfly, right? And fly about. Well, it's true because God has a plan for you, a purpose, a step-by-step thing. He doesn't leave you drifting clueless. God's plan for you is, is like stepping stones, okay? Um, we were out one Easter Sunday. We, we did not have a church building or a place to worship. We were super blessed to have the high school, the, the, the chapel, to meet in. Uh, one of the most difficult things for church startups and things like that is, is to have a place to meet. Uh, it's exorbitant. Uh, when we were in our missionary phase, back uh, as, as a Bana O'Eo Baptist ch- Church uh, mission, uh, which failed, by the way, uh, we were paying sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars for 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 the school, you know, cafeterias and things, and it's just you can't, you can, you're not going to make that. You know, you got to have outside support, which we did. Well, now we don't. Now, I'm pastor that uh, Pastor Phil Kakilala started Elite Baptist Church, and I get to pastor there, and, and it's a wonderful thing. We were meeting before all that out in a park, and we're studying, and this rather homeless man looking man come up and next thing we know we found out that this, if you ever wonder if you ever meet angels on this earth as this guy had to been one uh the way he talked to us he gave us this thing about the stepping stones but that is god lays stepping stones in our path he doesn't like the whole trail okay he doesn't tell you in the beginning you know today we're studying in, in bible uh, in, in in sunday school bible study um about how God had just given you a complete chronology there in, in Daniel, step by step, which is pretty cool. You don't normally see that in especially prophetical literature. But in this case, God is going to lay out for your life stepping stones to, for you to be able to go step by step by step. He's not going to like the whole way because it would overwhelm you. It would overwhelm me. He's going to instead show you the next step, the next step, as long as you are forsaking all and trusting him, Right? Isn't that F-A-I-T-H? Forsaking all, I trusted him? Yes. So you don't need to take all the steps, only the next one, right? Okay. So you prove his will to make sure you're following him in humility and trusting him by faith, not only because of what he's done for you, saving you from what? Yes, buddy. There are some that I have been able to lead to the Lord where I could smell it. I'm honest with you. I could smell it. I don't know what it is. It's a brimstone smell. It's just like electricity, like um, fire, like something. But you know what? When they pray and ask God to come into their heart and they make that transfer of their soul and God saves them, there is a difference in their life. And they, they change and they, they, they want what's, you know, I thought for many years that I would have to change before I would, could become acceptable to God, you know. Instead, God says, just come. Lay your burdens down. I will help you be who you're supposed to be. All that other stuff, that's on me. You, I just want you to do this. One step. Humble yourself. First time we walked into Phil Kakilala's church, Ali'i, we walked in, and I thought I heard God say, humble yourself. And I think that was my biggest problem when I was here the first time is I got the big head. Well, let me tell you, God hates the pride of man, period. There's, there's no room for high maka. There's no, there's no room for that. Um, he wants to be, he, he is doing for you every step of the way. He's showing you his love. All right. For I say, verse 3, through the grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Year by year, my faith grows stronger. 
because of my trusting in God, his reassurance, when I step that next step, let me tell you, it's scary to step the next step. It is. But you get courage because you have experience, and you, so you proceed. Sometimes blindly and stupidly. <laughs> step off, like go to China. <laughs> and then now, I, you know, we left Hawaii planning to go to China as missionaries. Okay? I had a position as a t uh, professor of English at the University of Putian in Fujian province, around the coast. And uh, 2008, the market, housing market fell, and China was so heavily invested in it, they said, through back channels, we can't pay you. <laughs> and we, don't, we can't upkeep your, even your apartment, if, if, if you're flat, they call it, over there. And so I had to respectfully, for them to say, save face, decline the position. I got stuck in Mississippi. God brought us back in another, that's a whole other story. But the key to being acceptable for the presence of the Lord is humility. This process humbled me. James 4.10 says, humble yourselves, what? In the sight of the Lord. Not in, the, in front of other people like Pharisees, right, and scribes. It says instead, in sight of the Lord. Does the Lord see, not see some things? No, the Lord sees everything, okay? And he shall lift you up. You humble yourself, God lifts you up. God, you, know, you whatever seeds you sow, so shall he reap, right? So he says, now here is some, I'm just going to keep on going because Pastor kind of did the good lead in the segue, and I'm loving it because that's when you know the Holy Spirit's working, right? So he says, for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. And every one members one of another. Just like all the butterflies together, right? <laughs> um, still working on this. Let's see. Okay. Maybe I'm just pressing the wrong button. Or, or not. Lord help me. Please. Huh. There we go. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy. Now, understand prophecy here is dealing with rightly dividing the word of God. you got to know your Bible to be able to teach. How do you get to know God? You know his son. His son is the Bible. He's the bread of life. Open it and feast. Some folks can only handle milk, mama baby, and others can handle meat. But as you grow, you will be able to feast on the word of God and be able to be a, a good minister, okay? So our ministry, you know, let us wait on our ministering or, or he that teaches on teaching. Let's do those things that we're supposed to be doing. Whatever God calls you to do in the church, do them with every due diligence that you have because it is a special moment in time that you will treasure, okay? You're being used of the Lord to do his will. No, well, going backwards now. I don't know how to use this. I'm sorry. It likes to click. It's side click. That work? Backwards. Okay, four. I found the button now. I'm good. All right, I can do this. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, or he that ruleth with diligence, or he that showeth Mercy. This world needs a lot more mercy. Okay, a lot more. And do it with cheerfulness. You know, be forgiving. You look back and say, well, you know. <laughs> These individuals are joined together from completely different backgrounds. Right? All over the world, I would say. Brought together here. All walks of life. All professions. And God calls you out. The ecclesia, right? The called out ones. Calls you out to form his church. Old word, uh, Gaelic word is Kirk. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Captain, you can go into that whole thing there another time. But uh, So let love be without, here's a big word, dissimulation, right? But it's, uh, I'll back up, to, I'll go back to this one and see. Without dissimulation, that means without hypocrisy. Okay? 
Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. So what is God's calling for your work? Is it exhortation? That's giving a good word? Is it, is it preaching? Is it getting in somebody's face and letting them know? There are times when you have to, okay? There was one gentleman I was called in. The son was so worried about him because he had been such a booger all of his life. Mean. And he said, I, I just don't want my, my father to go to hell. Would you please come and speak with him? And I'm, I'm not a confrontational person normally, okay? I'm just not. I'm usually, I just water off the duck's back, you know, it's on you. If I did something wrong, I will fix it. I will do my best, but I'm not going to give you excuse because excuse, just nobody listens to it anyway, right? Just fix it. Um, but this gentleman, as I come in, I got overwhelmed, and I, I mean, he's laying down in a bed, like all these stuff all in there, and I'm just, blah, 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 I'm just on him, you know? You, you've got to come to the Lord Jesus. He does not come to Lord, know the Lord Jesus Christ that day. But when his pastor came the next day, he prayed to, to, for Christ to come in, and he died that day later. I, again, that smell, was that's another one of those instances that day. Understand, what is God's calling for your work? Where do you work? What do you do? What is your profession, okay? What you do outside of church also matters because God's called you out of the world to here, but then he sends you forth out into the world to do what? Be his ministers, okay? So the outward ministry of the church is how you as an individual members live your faith through your profession. Do others see Jesus in you? You may be, you've heard, the only Bible anybody, these other people ever read, okay? We're in a society where people don't know what the Bible says. They hear the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, but there's no quote, there's no reference, there's no relationship. Does that make sense? Having a relationship with somebody and then showing them how Christ can change and then Teaching them slowly, kind of feeding them the word of God and, and scriptures and how God, suddenly they go, you know, there's something different about this person. And I guarantee you, this, this happens to me all the time at work. I guarantee you they'll come to you when they're in the worst stuff that they've ever got themselves into. And they'll come to you and ask for help. Why? Because there's something different about you. You're not like the others, you know. So... It's part of that being kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. Honor, in honor, preferring or putting someone before yourself. Are you glad when others are praised, get promotions, lauds, and honors, or do you get all salty? You should be happy. Not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Um... I'm learning more and more how to fine-tune being a good businessman, how to do the, do the work the right way. These guys have got a proven method. There are proven methods out there for just about everything. God's proven handbook and method for churches, yeah, right, right here in the Bible. So, um, so you reap what you sow. Give God your best. He will take care of the rest, yeah. Uh, it's not, he is not the one. You know, it is not the one who cuts your paycheck. That's your boss. You're working for Jesus, okay? He is your master. You presented your body, right? You asked him to come into your heart, to be the Lord over your life, to take the reins so don't snatch it back, okay? <laughs> Rejoice in hope even when things are the worst. He says, be patient in Tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Isn't that what's happened here? Weathered quite a storm, haven't we? Amen, God, thank you. He is to be praised. So walk according to your calling. Your interaction with others matter. I'll read from uh, 13 through 16. He says, distributing to the necessity of the, the saints. Be given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another and mind not the high things. Don't rearrange the pictures on the wall when the house is burning down. Okay, old Gaither song. He says, but condescend to men of low estate. 
and be not wise in your own conceits. When, when you brought us down, help lift him up. Give him what, he, what, what it can help him to get by, okay? In these times, people are, are going to be really, really desperate. Starting next month, when the $600 is no more, watch out. Okay? We've already gotten bulletins and all kind of stuff from corporate saying we're going to have to be on high alert and watching because it's going to get worse before it gets better. So talk to one another, pray with one another, be in communication, check in on one another, make sure everybody's get you know, all those kind of things that you're supposed to do. Um, all the things that a church does is it multiple things, okay? So be of the same mind one to another. It's the mind of Christ, okay? It's, it's, don't be thinking about all these high and heady things. Pretty, pretty soon God gets down to the real, and it, it could even get down to the point of survival, okay? As long as God allows you to meet in public like this, we meet. But there are things in the works. We already knew the end times were coming. There'd be wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, COVID, right? Communist Party COVID thing. This is an attack on the United States. It was. Now it's kind of attack on the world, and it backfired. Uh, we're, we're, we're stuck in a mode that may never change. We may never go back. I, I can't imagine a world without football. I, I love football. I love playing it. I love, I love uh, soccer football also. Uh, and, you know, basketball. Wow. Okay, enough. <laughs> Distributing to the necessities of the saints. You know, be out there. Do the things that need to be done. Take care of those that, that need help. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Weep with them that weep, okay? Be present, even if you have to, uh, what, what was it, the, the um, I have it, the, the FaceTime, or I don't have FaceTime, but the, the other thing you guys are doing, the Zoom, the Zoom, you know, there's all these different ways to connect that way. Do it, okay? Do whatever you can to stay connected because as these things progress, it's going to separate people further and further, and that's always been the deceiver's plan, is to separate out the flock, cut the flock down to the point where you are left alone, sad, and you just want to kill yourself because you can't do anything. Don't fall for it. You are special. You have a ministry, and you need to reach out and be a part of that because that's what the church is all about. Love the Lord, love each other, and love your brother more than yourself even, okay? Be of the same mind. Do the things. When someone is, 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 is low, don't think yourself all, hi, Maka. I've got it so good. I'm so proud of who I am. Pride goeth before a fall, and God does not love pride. Oh, my God. It's the pride of man is a stomach block. God hates pride, conceit, high-mindedness, haughty spirits, self-centered ambition. They always lead to a fall, thereby affecting everyone else around you. Okay? It's their hurricane, and they're in the middle of it, spooling around, looking for someone else to suck dry. But God gives you boundaries that you can set up. You can minister to people without being a, like a tar baby, stuck into their whole mess, okay? And drugs are a, a monster, okay? And they change people completely. And you're going to see people that are falling for those type of quote-unquote easy outs. They want to numb themselves. They don't want to, they just don't want to deal with it. Well, guess what? You're going to deal with it. Because no matter what happens, you're going to have to deal with everything, even the consequences of your actions, and you will affect others. And when, but when someone hurts you, don't go eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. Go recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide the things that are honest in the sight of men. Okay? Do the right thing always. Drift. <laughs> Do it right first. Yeah. So he says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. But there are times when you have got to have a boundary. And you got.